we will study voltage divider biasing in this lecture we have already completed two other biasing schemes the first one is fixed bias configuration and the second one is self bias configuration and now in this presentation we will discuss the third biasing scheme which is voltage divider biasing the basic construction you can see on your screen and the basic construction of voltage divider bias will remain same as it was in case of bjt if you compare the construction with the construction in case of bjt you will find only one difference in place of common ammeter bjt we have n channel jfet the dc analysis will not be same the dc analysis of bjt and jfet will be different so let's perform the dc analysis of this network as we are performing the dc analysis we can definitely perform few simplifications you can see three capacitors in the network c1 c2 and c3 c1 and c2 are coupling capacitors and c3 is the bypass capacitor and as we already know we can open circuit the three capacitors in case of dc signal we will open them and we will simplify this circuit like this the bypass capacitor c3 will also be replaced by the open circuit so this is how the circuit will look potential at this point is equal to vdd and potential at this point is also equal to vdd so instead of taking vdd common i will simply i will simply assign vdd individually to the two points at this point and at this point the potential is equal to vdd and this will help us perform the analysis now there is one very important point regarding the jfet we already know in case of junction field effect transistors the gate current that is ig is nearly equal to 0 amp this is the property of field effect transistors and because of this connection between resistance r1 and resistance r2 will be series connection let's try to understand how the connection is series connection and for this we will assume current through resistance r1 is equal to i1 and current through resistance r2 is equal to i2 now we will apply kirchhoff's current law at this node and according to kcl the sum of incoming currents will be same as sum of outgoing currents and in our case we have three currents i1 ig and i2 in which i1 is the incoming current i1 is the incoming current and it is the only incoming current so it is equal to two outgoing currents i2 and ig and as you can see ig is equal to 0 amp we can say i1 is equal to i2 and as the current through resistance r1 is same as current through resistance r2 they are connected in series and now we can easily find out the voltage drop across resistance r2 the potential at this point is vg because this is the gate terminal and potential here is equal to vg and the same terminal is connected to this terminal there is no resistance in between so the potential will be vg potential at this point is vdd and potential here is equal to 0 volt and to find out voltage drop across resistance r2 we will first find out the equivalent resistance the equivalent resistance will be r1 plus r2 the equivalent resistance will be r1 plus r2 and let's say the total current is equal to i i1 is equal to i2 and let's say they are same as i so i is the same current flowing through r1 and r2 and to find out i we will use ohm's law current i will be equal to voltage voltage divided by r equivalent and if you see the voltage across r equivalent then you will find it is vdd minus 0 volt so the voltage is equal to vdd and r equivalent is equal to r1 plus r2 r1 plus r2 
so this is the current i and to find out voltage drop across resistance r2 we have to multiply i with resistance r2 the voltage drop across resistance r2 is equal to current i multiplied with r2 current i is equal to vdd over r1 plus r2 so voltage drop is equal to r2 multiplied with vdd this is the numerator and the denominator will be r1 plus r2 this is the voltage drop you can see potential at this point is equal to vg and potential at this point is equal to 0 volt so the potential difference is equal to vg minus 0 volt which is equal to vg so we have the potential difference across resistance r2 and now we will find out the input voltage vgs we will find out the input voltage vgs and for this i will apply kirchhoff's voltage law in the input loop we will apply kirchhoff's voltage law in the input loop and if you see the polarity of vg then it will be like this plus minus and by using the kirchhoff's voltage law we have we have plus of vg plus of vg then minus of vgs minus of vgs then voltage drop across resistance rs will be subtracted and the voltage drop is equal to source current source current is multiplied with resistance rs and we already know the source current is same as the drain current so we can say the voltage drop the voltage drop is equal to id multiplied with rs we have already seen this point in the last lecture the voltage drop is equal to idrs and from here we can easily find out the input voltage vgs the input voltage vgs is equal to vg minus idrs and you can see the equation is equation of a straight line and we will plot the equation of a straight line along with the transfer curve and the intersection point will be the operating point our prime aim is to find out the operating point the q point and the intersection of this straight line with the transfer curve of the device will give us the operating point we already know how to plot the transfer curve of n channel jfet so i will quickly plot the transfer curve of n channel jfet we know how to use shockley's equation to plot the transfer curve the y axis is for the drain current and the x axis is for the voltage vgs i will extend the x axis more in this case because the straight line will not be passing through the origin in case of self bias configuration the straight line was passing through the origin but in this case it will not pass through the origin so i will extend the axis in the positive direction also and the x axis is for input voltage vgs this is origin and the drain current the maximum drain current or the saturated drain current i dss is already given and also the pinch of voltage vp is given and the third point we will get when we put vgs equal to vp by 2 in shockley's equation the corresponding drain current will be i dss by 4 when vgs is equal to vp by 2 and using this three points this three points we will plot the transfer curve it will look like this and after this we will plot the straight line vgs is the x axis and id is the y axis vgs is x axis id is the y axis and we know the equation of straight line y is equal to mx plus c i will try to rearrange this equation in this form and let's see what we have we will have id the drain current equal to minus 1 over rs multiplied with vgs plus vg over rs 
and if you compare this equation with y equal to mx plus c you will find minus 1 over rs is the slope and vg over rs is the intercept c we already know what is a slope and let's try to understand what do we mean by intercept intercept is the point on the y-axis here the intercept is positive so it will be the point on the y-axis above the x-axis and through this point the straight line will pass vg is equal to r2 multiplied with vdd over r1 plus r2 r2 and r1 are constant they are fixed and also vdd is fixed the biasing potential is fixed so vg is fixed and rs the source resistance is also fixed so vg over rs is fixed and we know it because these values are given in the problem so we can easily plot the point through which the straight line will pass and the coordinates of this point will be 0 the x coordinate will be 0 and the y coordinate will be vg over rs this length will be vg over rs very simple and to plot the straight line we need two points we have the one point and we need the another point and for this i will make drain current id equal to 0 amp and when you make id equal to 0 amp you will find vgs is equal to vg let me write this down when id is equal to 0 amp vgs is equal to vg so we have the another point whose coordinates are 0 and vg vg we know i have already told you vg we know and uh, let's say this is vg and the coordinates are 0 and vg vgs is equal to vg at this point we have two points and if i join these two points we will have the straight line we will have the straight line whose equation is vgs equal to vg minus idrs we simplified this equation in the form of y equal to mx plus c and we have id equal to minus 1 over rs vgs plus vg over rs and the point of intersection is the operating point the q point you can easily find out i d q and vgs q so in this way you have to find out the operating point in case of voltage divided bias the slope of this line the slope of this line is equal to minus 1 over rs and uh, i want to ask one question what will happen if you increase if you increase the resistance rs what will happen if you increase the source resistance rs when you increase the source resistance rs you can clearly see the intercept here will decrease vgs over rs will decrease because you are increasing rs and let's say the new vgs over rs is somewhere at this point so the straight line will be like this and in this scenario the slope is let's say equal to minus 1 over rs prime where rs prime is greater than rs so on increasing the source resistance the slope of the line will decrease and the operating point the operating point will come near to the x-axis which is the vgs axis so this is all for the operating point now we will find out the output voltage the output voltage the output voltage is vds and the output voltage will remain same as in case of self bias configuration to find out vds you have to apply kirchhoff's voltage law starting from vdd and you have to end at zero volt i will not find out vds i will directly write down vds it is equal to vdd minus drain current id inside the bracket resistance rd the drain resistance plus the source resistance so this is how you have to find out the output voltage and in this way this lecture ends 
If you want to ask anything, you may ask in the comment section.